we have Maria Rockwell. That is Clint Eastwood. She's in the Changeling. And now for our second guest of the evening, we have Maria Rockwell. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you, Tamara. For everybody who doesn't know Maria, she was recently starred in the film The Changeling, <laughs> well. the Clint Eastwood film. All of a sudden, she just splashes onto the scene, <laughs> and we connected through our spiritual connections. I got an yes. email from you one day, and, and I was like, oh my God, I got an email from Maria Rockwell, a beautiful actress in one of Clint Eastwood's films. How did you do it? How did? And I'm sure it took forever. You said you've been in film for 17 yes. years. Yes, I have. It's, uh, it's been a while, so I've been actually doing a lot of more than just acting. I do a lot of behind the scenes, and just I just love filmmaking and its process, so I just wanted to get my hands dirty in every form mm -hmm. I could possibly do. And, and this role came up kind of out of the blue, and I auditioned, and I didn't care about the audition. I, I just want to get it in, get it out, and I didn't care. And apparently that works. So <laughs> <laughs> it worked really good, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, because like in our spiritual journey, like sometimes we want it so bad that that actual or can push what mm -hmm. we want away, but like when you finally let go, yeah. then it just falls on top of you. Exactly. And, and so you're, you're about to make this huge splash in Hollywood, and everyone's, everyone's about to know who you are. But what we all know, it doesn't happen overnight. Like you mm -hmm. said, you've been on this journey for 17 years. Mm -hmm. So tell us, how did you get started, and, and what's that journey been like? Well, it's been real interesting because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, you know, when I was in high school, and then I went to college, and I went to drama school and all that. Well, the first year in college, you know, I went to school and the teacher actually took me aside one day and said <clears throat> you don't need to be here and I said what do you mean she says well you just don't need to be here um, you need to go get an agent uh, and that was <laughs> it it was in Dallas and I thought so okay. basically she was saying you're a natural Bas you don't basically need any yeah training. <laughs> nothing like leave and so I did I went home and I told my mother and she of course was shocked and wasn't really thrilled about the decision I made <laughs> so yeah. I said but that's what I really want to do now home for you like we were saying earlier is Texas Texas I'm from Arkansas yeah. so we grew <gasps> up in the south now we're out <laughs> Here on the West Coast, mm -hmm. things are happening. We're women in film. Yes, <laughs> and thank God because there's so much going on with more women, and I'm so uh, pleased to be united with a lot of the women that are actually doing something about that in the business and film and, and directors and producers and so forth, and I'm really interested in producing. So, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I would really love to do everything if I could possibly mm -hmm. do it, you know. So. Yeah. And this film is, is a really a wonderful film. I, I enjoyed making it, and Clint Eastwood is definitely a different nothing mm -hmm. that you would ever imagine. Yeah, we saw that picture earlier in the show of mm -hmm. you with Clint Eastwood. Yes. He's a hard one to get a picture with because I've seen him lately in a couple of places at mm -hmm. the Thalians Ball and couldn't get near him. He was just mobbed by the press, right. you know. He doesn't He doesn't really take pictures with people. I just yeah. happened to be the last day of the set and I, I was going to get a picture just of myself and the first day he was gracious enough to say, hey, yeah. you want to get a picture with Clint? I said, of course. <laughs> um, and so, yes, he's, he's really interesting. I loved it because it's very low-key on the set, very quiet action there's no cut Woo. it's go and stop it's mm -hmm. very now tell us cut. about the character you play in this movie well I I was uh, cast as a police matron um, that actually arrests Angelina and puts the handcuffs on her and takes her into the psych ward mm -hmm. um, against her will and um, it, it was just interesting having to play that character because I have to slap handcuffs on Angelina, which was <laughs> entertaining in itself, right. as you can imagine. So <laughs> I have lots of dinner stories to tell, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to think, well, okay, we're um, doing, getting ready for the scene. I said, okay, Angelina, I've got to practice on you, so what do you want me to do? How hard? You know, she, and she looks at me like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You know, you can do anything you want, do whatever you need to do. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, great. So she was really easy to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the scene, and then I wasn't sure about everything because everybody started talking over everyone else, and it was just kind of a hodgepodge, and I didn't know. And Angelina goes, "Just do whatever you want to do. It's Have fine. you seen the film yet? Yes, we, we got to see it, it um, okay. a week before it came out, and um, the cast and crew got together and got to see it. So. How did you feel about your performance? I really was it what was, you expected? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I and it left me in. <gasps> Which is amazing. Yeah, I know. Sometimes when you hit the cutting room floor, that really sucks. But they left you in. That's well, that was thing. funny because <laughs> I actually uh, auditioned for two roles, two police matrons. Oh. And the first one I really wanted to get, I went, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And then I auditioned for the second one and whatever. Mm -hmm. And my agent calls me one night and he says, okay, you got it. And I said, oh, great. And I said, which one? He says, oh, the police matron. I said, oh, okay. He says, not the first one. The first one only had one day. And so I had three weeks, oh, and so that was even, yes, and it went right through the writer's strike. Okay, well, we're going to take a look at the yeah. trailer. Now tell me, are you in the trailer? Do we see you at all? Um, just trailer? the back of my head. The back of her head. They okay, wouldn't, everybody, yeah. watch Sorry. closely <laughs> for Maria Rockwell. Take a look at the trailer. This is The Changeling.
name is Christine Collins. On March 10th, my nine-year-old son, Walter Collins, disappeared. And a five-month investigation led to a boy being brought to Los Angeles from DeKalb, Illinois. The LAPD told me and all of you that this boy was my son. He was not my son. Is this Mrs. Christine Collins? Yes. I'm the pastor over at St. Paul's Presbyterian. So I've made it my mission in life to bring to light all the things the LAPD wish none of us ever knew about. This police department does not tolerate dissent, and you are in a position to embarrass them, and they do not like it. I just want my son home. Why are you doing this, Mrs. Collins? You have stopped looking for my son. Why should we that be looking for something we've already found? The mayor wants this to go away. Yeah. You can't do this. No. You are to convey the prisoner to the Los Angeles County General Hospital Psychopathic Ward. <laughs> By signing this, you certify the police for right in sending you here for observation, and it absolves them of all responsibility. I won't sign that. Orderly! What the hell have you done with Christine Collins? I know my son is out there. I can still feel him. Your son, unfortunately, would not be the first. If you do it right, he may very well be the last. Your handling of the Christine Collins case has exposed this department to public ridicule. If the boy you brought back is not Walter Collins, then where the hell is he? I want my son back! I want my son back! Wow, what a gripping, heart-wrenching story. Yeah. What, a, what a blessing to be a part of that message very, film. Very much a blessing, and it was a true story, and so we it makes it even more scarier and heartfelt mm -hmm. about uh, the uh, what the the police of mm -hmm. Los Angeles did to this poor woman. Mm -hmm. But yes, it is a very very. I love period pieces. I do. I love to do them. I love the 1800s, and so I, mm -hmm. I kind of venture into that area. And I've got this classic look, so I try to mm -hmm. use that as much as possible. So mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's really a, a just a wonderful experience yeah. working with Clint. I just I'll love to do it again. And then the principal. <laughs> that message film it's almost like in a way it's kind of like that film is about each and every one of us and the struggle we have with our ego and mm -hmm. our ego wants to stay in control and maintain this front and don't you tell us that we were wrong you know oh, absolutely say, and, and it's kind of like you know let it go let it down be, be mm -hmm. willing to admit that you're wrong exactly and you know have the truth come out yeah like because it's going to anyway right eventually it all comes <laughs> out so as we both know yeah. So yeah so I, I definitely want to be involved with more spiritual based mm -hmm. films and message films and uh, another reason why I contacted mm -hmm. you because I think that the industry really needs that right now mm -hmm. and uh, it definitely needs to have messages out there that that teaches people about where the world's going what we're doing and mm -hmm. so I'm really and happy. film is one of the ways we can get those stories across it's almost like medicine mm -hmm. you know when you sit in a film that the film can actually do something to your soul mm -hmm. you know rather than if somebody just tried to teach you something or tell you about a law you yeah. know like this you have the the letter of the law and then you have the spirit of the and film can really get that across. Yeah, and people and, are visual, so they mm -hmm. take things in a lot more. When you see all these spiritual films, I think it resonates with people, and they want to maybe change your life or you know find a way out of what their problems are. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm kind of looking to go right now. So yeah. Now, so have there have there been premieres and red carpets? Are you getting to the glitzy stuff as well? No, that, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not is yet. Still coming? No, is not it yet. On the way? I'm I'm hoping. I'm hoping. So yeah, this is just a little you know a little starting point, restarting yeah. my career and. I'm hoping to get more out Wait, of this. Lots so. can happen. Think about this. If this mm -hmm. film gets nominated for an Oscar, you're probably going to get to wear the gown and go to the show. <laughs> and, then, know, and then you can interview me. And maybe, yeah. <laughs> then, and then this time you'll, you'll be like, who? You know, you won't. You'll be like, call, call my people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you win. I can just contact you directly. Exactly. But you could be up on stage, you know, with the whole movie, accepting mm -hmm. the, you know, isn't that wild how your life can change, change in, in a minute? Instant. And, and that's why we love it here in Los Angeles. Like, we came from the South. We're here. You know, fun things can happen. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm blessed. So yes, you are very much so. All right, so that's been our show today. We've been talking about women in See film. See you guys later down the road. Mm -hmm. Mwah. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>